Hey guys, I'm glad that you're here with me once again. I want to uh, try and get right into the word here tonight if I can. And uh, I want to start off by asking you a question. Have you ever been in a situation where praise has prepared the way for deliverance? Or do you know of an area in your life? Do you know of an area in somebody else's life? Or do you even know of a story in the Bible that can kind of show you some of those things? Well, one of the things that I came across that the Lord really impressed upon my heart was this idea of praise preparing the way for deliverance. And so what I want to do is I want to look at one of the most prolific stories in the Word of God. So if you've got your Bibles with you, I want to turn to uh, a story that is very well verse very well familiar with the church and it's in second chronicles chapter 20 and so we're talking about in the days of king jehoshaphat and so in chapter 20 it starts off by saying this now it came about after this that the sons of moab and amon together came to make war against jehoshaphat Verse 2, then some came and reported to Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming out against you from beyond the sea. And King Jehoshaphat was afraid and turned his attention to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to seek the help of the Lord, and they even came from the cities of Judah to seek the Lord. So I want to stop right there for one second. So verse number 2 it says a great multitude is coming. And I want to stop there and, and just explain that that word great multitude, when you look at scholars and what they're saying about that, that's actually the Hebrew word called hamon. And hamon could mean a crowd, it could mean a large number, but in this particular case, they're saying that it was a roar, a tumultuous noise. There was a sound that was coming forward. And whenever we just, you know, look at wars back in history, one of the things that they would try to do to intimidate the other side when they line up is create these sounds, create these, these loud noises to intimidate and distract fear into the people. And it says right here in verse number three that Jehoshaphat, was afraid and turned his attention to seek the Lord. King Jehoshaphat is no different than you and I are. We're going to face situations in life that are going to make us afraid. It's a natural human emotion, and there's nothing wrong with being afraid. It's what we do with that fear. And so the first thing that I want to point out is that when he was afraid, what's the first thing that he did? He turned his attention to the Lord. So I think that we can kind of look at today's situation or any crisis that we have in life because we're going to face something at some particular point in time. And I think that as long as we take our fear and we turn it back towards the Lord and we give it to Him and we appropriate that fear, it's, it's going to be an okay thing. And I know that some people get... Uh, a little bit nervous about saying that, you know, we shouldn't be afraid, but you know what, it's a natural human emotion. But I want to continue on here, and, and I want to read just a little bit further on, because then it says that all these people, they encamped about them. But then in verse number 14, it says, Then in the midst of the assembly, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, Verse 15, and he said, Listen, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, Do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. 16, Tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ancient of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the valley in front of the wilderness. You need not fight in this battle. Station yourselves. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. Verse number 18. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down and worshipped the Lord. And the Levites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a very loud voice. So I, I want to I shout something here. I want to declare something. 
when we read the word of god we find that there are situations where the enemy can encamp about the people of israel and in this particular case they were coming to fight judah now judah itself means praise so in essence what's happening is you've got these demonized groups of people coming to invade the land is to take away this land called praise and i think it's very important that we understand that no matter what situation is going on in life there's a lot of noise that's going on around out there but i find it very interesting that we can take the word of god and begin to apply these truths into our lives of what to do with praise you see the first thing that we need to do is pray but when we pray that's not the strategy for us to move into action but the first thing we got to do is pray because we're never going to get the strategy unless we go there first so i think that we need to take the example of what's been provided here and then do something with it so what was the what was the answer well they were to send out the musicians they were to send out the singers ahead of the army that's what you know if you begin to read this and i'm not going into it in, in detail from there but what i do want to point out is this the word praise itself is an english term so when we think of praise we think of um, joining together in church and, and lifting up our hands and things but sometimes we don't necessarily understand where that came from if you're a hebrew whenever you see the word praise it has a different meaning to it so most times there's seven different forms of that word of praise i spoke in one of the other videos about one of the words called tequila that's the spontaneous praise of men that's the praise that god inhabits so when you begin to read the word of God, you'll find that Tehillah is where God inhabits. That's where his presence is actually made manifest. So interesting, if we read this and we go to verse number 19 and it says, And the Levites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel. That word praise right there is the word halal which is the root word of hallelujah. So halal means to rave, to boast, to shine, to be clamorously foolish before the Lord. So what's happening is after they heard the word of the Lord, they understood what they were supposed to do because they were in prayer, they got the strategy. Now they rose up and now they began to declare and, and with a loud voice, they began to halal the Lord God. So. That could be anything from, you know, maybe singing, our God is an awesome God to, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, or something along those lines. They're, they're boasting about the greatness of God. So what we need to understand is that noise, that tumultuous noise that was there from the crowd was now being superseded by something else. And that was the halal. It was that, that, uh, that shout, that boasting, that rising up with a very loud voice that was superseding what was going on around them. You see, up until verse number 19, nothing had changed. The enemy had still encamped about them. The enemy was still there. There was still the dull roar. There was still going to be an imminent attack. They just they they got to the point where the israelites now recognize i'm no longer listening to that noise i'm no longer focusing on what's going on but my eyes are now turned to the lord god and my ears are focused into the things of the spirit how much more do we have the opportunity now to do such things and get our minds and our eyes focused upon him and begin to release praise within us that supersedes that which is going on around us and i'm not just talking about the virus i'm talking about any situation that you can have in life because the enemy is constantly going to attack the enemy is constantly coming to steal your praise from you you see you have the spirit of the lord within you and because you are created in his image you're special and you've got something and i want to talk about a little bit more about that in another video but we need to understand that right here now there's the change and the change begins to shift because the people's hearts begin to shift and another thing that was very interesting is that jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground in verse number 18. basically guys that means you got to get your mentality 
down below your heart. Your heart has got to be right with God. You've got to worship God from your heart and you've got to take your mind and you've got to put it below that and, and, and put it right to the ground and, and worship God from, from a heart thought, from a heart standpoint and not just a head standpoint. It's great to have knowledge, but a heart needs to be right with them. And that is something that happens right here in verse number um, 18 and 19. There is a shift that begins to happen at that particular point in time. Again, nothing has changed on the side of the enemy, but now God's people have started to change. And then when we look at verse number 20, and it says, and they rose up early in the morning and went out to the wilderness. Verse number, verse number uh, 21, it says, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him, I'll talk about that word, in holy attire, as they went out before the army, and said, Give thanks to the Lord, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And when they began singing and praising, the Lord set up ambushes against the sons. Of Ammon and Moab. So when we go back to verse number 21, this is cool, guys. And it says, He appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised Him. That word praised right there, that's the word yada. So that is the extending of hands and beginning to thank God for things that have yet to come into place. So they're beginning to praise God, uh, you know, for victory. They're beginning to praise God for things that are not happened yet. So they're beginning to declare in the heavens. They're beginning to basically prophesy that our God is great, that he's the victor, that he's the ruler, that he's the king, you know, that he's the all in all, that he is going to have victory in this situation. They're beginning to praise him in that, in that situation. And they also said, give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness is everlasting. They're already giving thanks to God. They're already saying his loving kindness is everlasting. He's going to look after us. It wasn't some great big testosterone filled song. It was simply give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness is from everlasting. And so we have the opportunity right now that we in this time, we can, though we might not be within a church, we've got a, 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 an opportunity and we're in a season right now where we can say, you know what, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I will walk into his courts with praise. I will give him thanks. I'll magnify him for who he is. You see, there's, there's a pattern to what's going on here. And then when it says in verse number 22, and they began singing and praising, there is the to heal a praise right there. Remember I talked about in one of the other videos, God inhabits the praises of his people, that to heal the praise. And when the to heal the praise begins to happen and God begins to inhabit that, God is so awesome and so amazing that where his presence is and where his kingdom is, no darkness can stay there because he's so awesome. And so when his kingdom is established on earth as it is in heaven, there's where darkness is broken. There's where chains are broken. There's where deliverance has happened. There's where healing has happened. There's where joy is released because his kingdom is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. And so therefore, when the Tehillah praise happens, when God's kingdom becomes manifest, in on earth as it is in heaven no darkness can be there and then what's it say and God set up ambushes when they began singing so I find this awesome guys that we don't have to think that we're not part and parcel of God's kingdom because here God is saying when they did this God automatically began to move on their behalf because God wants to partner with us in life. So no matter what situation we're going through, if we get our eyes and our, our ears attuned to what the Lord is saying, when we get down into praising God for who he is and the majesty that he has, and when we begin to focus in on the beauty of the Lord, something begins to shift. Not only does it begin to shift in us, but it begins to shift in the things that are going on around us. And so God begins to take control and God up there basically saying when we do that God's hand will move in right immediately when we start to do that so it's not a matter of it's got to wait for a little bit God is already starting to move but one thing that we need to understand is although there is a process and there is a pattern to some of these things that happen in the Word of God when it comes to praise it all starts with worship it all starts with getting our hearts right with him it all starts with making sure that our eyes are fixed upon the 
face of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to recognize that God is not a formula. God is a Father, and He loves us, and He has a plan for us. And when we begin to operate in the things that God has given to us, then we begin to walk into the destiny. We begin to walk into the anointing, and we begin to walk into the, the, the plan that God has for us in seeing His kingdom come and be established. You see, God is not up there just wanting all the glory. He wants us to partner with Him that we can magnify Him, that we can glorify in Him because He's the all in all. He wants us to be part. We've been crafted into the vine. We are now a royal priesthood because of what Jesus Christ has done. You see, and, and it, it, this is just such an awesome thing that we have the opportunity to do right now. And so I want to just go right back to where I started out. Have you ever had a time when praise has prepared the way for deliverance? And if you haven't, then I want to encourage you, take the Word of God. Don't just take my word for it. Allow the Holy Spirit to take this Word and let it sink in deep into your heart. Meditate upon the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit teach it because He's the ultimate teacher. And when He teaches you and when you understand it from Him, it's going to be some real meat in your spirit. And you're not going to, you're not going to be weary. You're going to gain strength. Your faith is going to grow strong. And suddenly you're going to find praise coming out of your mouth like you've never known before and it's going to be a good thing and you're going to have joy and you're going to have happiness and there's going to be something that's going to supersede all the situation that's going around no matter what the circumstance is because you you have to understand that the prosperity that they had was based upon uh, their eyes and their ears turning away from the noise that was going on. Nothing had changed out there except their focus. Their heart was, was now <coughs> excuse me, to the Lord God Almighty. So I want to encourage you. And I hope that reading this word right now, that going through this, this old familiar story, I hope that this has brought some benefit to you. I really pray that if you haven't had an opportunity to praise and see deliverance happen, that you would use this for, for your own life, that you would use this and allow the Word of God to, to sink deep and to build your faith as you're doing this. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed on what's going on out there. Take the Word of God. Let it strengthen you. Build your faith. Let praise come out of your lips. Lift up your hands, just like the Word says here in that, that Yara praise, and giving thanks to Him. Hello, God. Just say, thank you, God. You're awesome in all your ways. You're an amazing God. There's no one that's like you. Release that praise. And then all of a sudden, we, we need to recognize that, that started out with something that might be organized, but turned into something that was spontaneous. And when God shows up, I'll tell you what, nothing can be the same because he's just too amazing. He's too good. He's too wonderful. Thanks, guys, for taking some time with me here today. I pray that it's been a blessing for you. I miss you. I love you. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for taking the time. Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.